hostiles. 12 o'clock is six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Modern-day Hollywood screenwriters take a great deal of license with characters from uh, Greek and Latin antiquity. One of those is the Cyclops, the classic giant creature, very ill-tempered, with one giant eye in the middle of where there should be two. Now, historically, if you really look at the images, they looked very much like a man, and there were um, places for two eyes, but there just happened to be one over what would be the bridge of the nose. And you can see this here. In this particular case on the right, they've taken the eye and moved it all the way up to the center of the forehead, I think trying to give this particular one some type of uh, power of seeing. Well, there were actually three different groups of Cyclops that had very different roles, and I'd like to cover that real quick because I found something in Antarctica that looks like it may have been um, some type of a tribute to the third group that I'm going to speak of here. In Greek mythology, the Cyclops were giant one-eyed creatures. Three groups can be distinguished in Hesiod's Theogony. They are the brothers Brontus, Steropus, and Argus, who provided Zeus with his weapons, the Thunderbolt. In Homer's Odyssey, the second group, they are an uncivilized group of shepherds, the brethren of Polyphemus, encountered by Odysseus. But then the third group of Cyclops were the famous wall builders which I think is somewhat intriguing, given the current um, political status going on right now. Uh, there are things known as uh, Mycenaean uh, walls or Cyclopean walls, Mycenaean masonry, and i just like to show real quick what they're talking about. The use of these giant boulders angled and placed in such a way that the weight and the angle they're setting at reinforce the wall so that you don't need... Um, Masonry, you don't, masonry, you don't need mortar, pardon me. In between them, or you need very little. And so this is the, uh, the style that they attributed to the, the Cyclops because, of course, they were 
big enough and strong enough to manhandle the boulders to do this to, you know, cause you know, this wall is, um, high enough that she would, you know, need some type of crane or equipment to get these huge boulders up, um, this high. Anyway, without any further delay in Antarctica, I just wanted to show something that I found and it looks very much like there was a, uh, some type of an effort to create a monument to a cyclops here. Now, as you can see, we have the one giant brow. You can almost see where there might have been two, but that's, you know, classically what they looked like. You can see where the nose would have been. You can see the mouth, the, the chin, the square jaw. You can even see some attempt at making an ear. And the way it's... Uh, made up here. It looks like some type of a helmet or a headdress. And this is 45 meters tall and 20 meters high. You wouldn't miss this from anywhere in the region. You wouldn't look up at this and see anything else other than a giant face of a cyclops. It kind of makes you wonder, what what was the name of Antarctica before people started calling it Antarctica? Because that's really a description of a location, not the name of a continent. You would have to know where Arctica, quote unquote, was to know where Antarctica would be. So it'd be kind of a mysterious name. But in the region right close to it, there's some things that are very, very suspect that make you think that this was this area here that looks like, of course, there was some cataclysm. Was at one time something much more important? Here, right in front, we can see what very much looks like an entryway some type of a doorway to um, some type of a complex underneath. We can see here that whether this was the result of an earthquake or some type of an attack or war, whatever this was, it's teetering very much. And we see that also down here, something much smaller, but still very, very um, indicative of some type of tunnelway or complex into or underneath the ice, which has kind of been the theme of what we've been looking at in Antarctica, is that the existence on the continent isn't something that is going to be found on the surface. We're going to see evidence on the surface, yes, but we won't find the actual civilization or the smoking gun types of things until we get down underneath and get imagery from there. And I think that's probably what's holding us back. Now, Relevant to the wall that I showed, I would like to show something not too far away. And very much indicative of that Mycenaean masonry. Now, this from above just looks like, oh, it's just an area of mountains. But when you look closely, there's no way, there's no way you have this many beautiful walls constructed from just masonry or just pardon me from from mountains this is clearly the the work of a mason some type of and i just think it's a very strange coincidence that i found these two things in conjunction with each other also nearby in case anybody had any doubts look at this bridge and you can see that something it's been stacked up underneath and created. You have these two uh, sections of mountain, and there was this valley in between. And someone has constructed some type of a walkway or a pathway above. That's just unambiguous, completely unambiguous. So you can count here. Let's see, at least this for sure is a wall. This one, this one. I mean, I see one major atrium here, two smaller ones. Looks like some type of an opening here. Some type of hallways or pathways through. And out here in the front, let's see if I can find it. It's kind of harder to see. There looks like there was some type of a step way up and you can see two smaller ones here and here 
Now, not also very far away, there is this area. Let's see if I can find it. If I have it marked properly. Oh, here we go. It looks like this is some type of a mountaintop fortress. Because down here in the front, does this not look like something very, very uh, constructed for a reason? These paths, these turns, you can see how there's a, a walkway up, and then you come to this area, and then you come down here, you make a right, and then you go to this circular area right here that leads to paths over here and over here. But as you zoom out, it looks like they might have taken advantage of some type of natural rock formation and created some type of a settlement behind this large area of rock. Because looking in behind, you see all sorts of construct of what would have been a settlement. And the way this is built up in the center right here, and there's very, it looks like it was breached. It looks like this was um, being defended at some point, and there are just areas where they breached through the walls and got through, and whatever the conflict was about, we don't know. But like I said, all of these locations, that's the best thing about doing these kind of videos. I can, you can get Google Earth Pro for yourself. You can go here for yourself with your own um, equipment and look at it and see everything that I'm showing you is not been altered, not been in any way changed. So that, you know, you can make up your own mind. Now, at nine minutes and 20 seconds, there is one final thing I wanted to show you, which has to do with that squid that we'd found in the last video. And I know that's kind of a strange um, segue, but it was something I just wanted to cover. It's small, but I want, want to make sure that I covered it so that people saw this. Now, on a colossal squid and a lot of other squids, you see how there's a lot of smaller tentacles? But then there are these two larger ones. And they've got these kind of foot pads at the end. Now, I found something else in Antarctica, a completely different location than the uh, squid that we covered. I think it's a second one. It's up on the ice. And what makes me think that is this shape. Now, we've got the giant mantle here. And then we have all of these weird-looking, shorter tentacle-like things. But then one super long one, and then look at the end. See how it has that telltale foot pad, whatever, grabbing device, whatever it is? This is a region that I was going to do a whole nother um, video on, because it looks like there's some type of active fishing going on here. This very much right here looks like the body of a fish. You can see the dorsal fin, the tail fin, um, the front pectoral fin. I mean, um, it's pretty easy to see. There's something else up here that looks very much aquatic. And it's all over this entire region. Over here, it's I can't really describe this one quite exactly the way I want to yet, which is why I was going to wait to do the video. But there are things in the region, when we're talking about civilization, we're talking about archaeological finds. How many 90-degree angles do you see here? How can this possibly be natural when you look at something like this? I mean, this is clearly some kind of a construct. I mean, they may have taken advantage of certain natural aspects in the region. So that might be why we can attribute some of the characteristics to nature. But even Hoover Dam, if you would look at Hoover Dam, you would see it as partially nature and partially hand of man. You couldn't have just built Hoover Dam any old place. 
And I guess I will leave that there and save the rest of this for another day. But I guess here's one more location just to, I guess, put the icing on the cake. I mean, perfect squares like this, they just don't occur. And they just don't occur in nature in this frequency, um, in this proximity, in this way. And I think this is probably going to be one of the most exciting times to be alive in the next 15 to 20 years with the things that are going to come out of Antarctica as a result of the warming. So anyway, like, share, subscribe. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time. 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Chris King. Isn't the landesite off world, sir? Thank you.